Hey there, seventh grade. Good to see you. I know it's been a while since we had a video, so I'm sure you're very excited about this. But we are going to do the test review so you can get that one final good grade in math and have a fun and exciting summer. So let us jump right in here. Let's do this here. So here's 13A. Number one, $120 repair bill includes $36 for parts and the rest for labor. What percent of the bill was for labor? And I know we get confused on this. What, what percentage? It doesn't talk about an increase or decrease in percent. This is just a simple percentage thing. So you just have your percent box. And you are... Um, Splitting your bill into, you know, some for parts, some for labor, and then it's total. So here's your percentage. Your total is going to be 100%. We don't know either the parts or labor percent, but we do know the numbers here. A $120 repair bill. Um, it has $36 for parts. The rest is for labor. What percent of the bill was for labor? So we just do our little subtraction. Uh, if you take $120 minus $36, you are going to get, um, looks like $84 for labor. So we need to figure out what this little box is here. We don't need that up there. I'm going to get this, make this, blow this up a little bit so we can see it here. I don't know if that'll help you or not, but uh, so we just make a fraction out of this. And over what number over 100 is going to equal? 84 over 120. Um, maybe it'd be easier to just reduce this fraction, cut them both in half. You get 42 over 60. I might make my little pen a little, a little smaller here. Uh, for, cut them both in half, and again, you get 21 over 30. Look, I can keep cutting that in half. Three, I get seven over 10. Oh, boom, that's nice because then 10 times 10 is 100 and, and seven times 10 would be 70%. Seven times 10 would be, so my percentage here would be 70%. And obviously it'd be 30% for parts. So there you go. Um, Problem number two, students measured the mass of the rock, they're reading through blah, 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 find the mean and the median. Well, mean is average, and median would be middle, so the first thing you have to do, let's find the middle first. First thing we do is arrange them in orders, so it looks like 97.3 is first, then 98.4, sorry, 98.4. Uh, 98.6, 99.0, and then 99.6. Oh, wait, 99.2. And the median, remember, is the middle one. There are five numbers there, so the middle is going to be this 98.6. Um, to find the average, I'm not going to take your time to have you watch me do this. You are going to add all five of these together and then divide by five. And that will get you the average. Mean means average. And again, I would have a piece of note paper out, kids, and figuring out so that I can write myself notes on how to take tests. Oh, number three is always an award winner for seventh grade. A vertical yard stick cast a shadow 24 inches. So we know that a yard is 36 inches. So let's do that. A vertical yard stick is 36 inches and cast a shadow that's 24 inches. Here's its shadow. A flagpole cast a shadow that is 16 feet. So my flagpole is much larger. It casts a shadow 16 feet. How tall is the flagpole? And remember, we just simply do a proportion box. And as long as we label them correctly, we will be okay. Um, we are comparing the um, yardstick compared to the flagpole, and we are measuring the height of each based and its shadow of each. 
height of the yardstick is 36 inches. Its shadow is 24. Height of the pole, we don't know, but we know its shadow is 16 feet. Again, look at how many times we just seem to do these proportions. 36 over 24 equals what number over 16? Reducing these again, 12 goes into both of those. So if I divide them by 12, that gives me 3, and this gives me 2. And 2 times what is 16? 8. So 3 times 8 is 24. My flagpole is 24 feet tall. Problem for the sales tax on 7.5%. What is the sales tax on a $164 purpose or $164 purchase? So remember, tax tip percentages is always multiplication. Please don't divide this out. The only issue you have is changing seven. Well, let's write it down here. We want seven one and a half percent times one hundred sixty-four dollars. And you can leave off those decimals. It's not going to affect your answer in the end. Just know your answer in the end is in money. <clears throat> How do you write this as a decimal? We know seven percent is 0 0.07. Well, here's what you have to think. What is one half as a decimal? It is 0.5. So you just tack a 5 at the end of this. Because if you move the decimal, it would be 7.5%. And I'm multiplying that by 164. So quickly, let's do that math. 164 times 0 0.075. We get 20, 32, 8. Put a 0 down, 7 times 4 is 28. Carry the 2, 42, 44, I get 0, 0, 3, 5, and 3 decimal places is right there. You pay $5.30 in tax, which makes sense to me. Sounds like appropriate. 5, the speedometer on Maury's car shows the speed in both miles per hour and kilometers per hour using 1.6 as the equivalent for one mile. Find the the mile per hour rate that is equivalent to 80 kilometers per hour. So they give you, this is your unit multiplier. We know that 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. That's what we're going to use for our unit multiplier. We are converting this. So I write that 80 kilometers per hour. And I want to change that into miles. So again, remember, labels are the ultimate in importance here. If kilometers are on top there, kilometers have to be on the bottom there. Miles are on top. I know that 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. I take my cross cancel, my kilometers. Your answer is going to be 80 divided by 1.6. So let's do that, 80. 1.6, move the decimal, add a zero, it's 16 into 800, which is 50. You end up with 50 miles per hour, MPH. And then on over here, heading up, we're already on problem number six. How about that? Things are crazy. What is the length of a diagonal rectangle that is 24 inches long and 10 inches wide? So here's my rectangle that is 10 inches wide by 24 inches long. So we want this diagonal. And obviously a diagonal cuts this rectangle into two triangles. And we want to know the hypotenuse, and that should make you think Pythagorean theorem, and hopefully this is a triple. So what we have to do is... There is no 10, 24. Let's put the 24 up here. So let's try and see. Well, we can reduce those, cut them both in half. You get a 5, 12 triangle if you split them in half. Is there a 5, 12? By golly, there is. It's a 5, 12, 13. So the diagonal, though, is not 13 because you have to redouble it because this is the smaller triangle. So you double it, and it becomes 26 inches for your diagonal. Uh, 26 for your diagonal. Oh, 7 could not get any easier, kids. You are just, first of all, thinking about this as a equation. Think of this as an equal sign to get x by itself. I just do the opposite of adding 2, which is subtract 2. x then becomes less than 1. 
that solved on your number line at one. It's an open circle because there's no equal sign and it's numbers less than one, which goes this way. Number eight, write the equation of line in slope intercept form. So here'd be the first thing I do. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. The b is where it crosses the y-axis. And where does it cross the y-axis? But right here, which is negative 1. So there's my b. And the only other thing I need is the letter m. m is slope. And to find the slope, you're going to have to make a triangle out of what you have here. I would just go from here, and it looks like it crosses another point right there. So my triangle, remember slope, 